can always call Whatever you need from me You know I won't drop the ball You know you my all in all I know you the god of all So just tell me what to do I know you can never lose My storage is vacant Like Romo, I used to keep taking the wrong road, and I watch how I'm breaking these strongholds. Yeah, you made me beautiful, you know that you the go, you came and gave me the song. I was lost, now I'm found, then you sent me. I was blind, now I see 2020. I give thanks for the day that you came into my Revelation is defined as the act of revealing hidden truths. God communicating divine truths. Unlocking mysteries. And when our eyes are open,
opened, the darkness is flooded with great light. Immediately deliverance has come and freedom has come. This freedom isn't just for you or me, but for our families, our communities, and the generations connected to us. His word by his spirit for his kingdom. This isn't just any church. This is Revelation Church. Welcome to Revelation Church. We will now inform you of our Lifeline Essentials. Your attention is key, as this may differ from any church service you've experienced before. If this is your first visit, we welcome and greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus. If you've already been here before, it's great to see you again, family. How are you staying connected? The information booth is where you can find our Lifeline QR code, so you can officially become a member of Revelation Nation. And to those who are watching online, don't worry. You can scan the code too. We love to have you join us online. Beyond joining us every Sunday and every Prophetic Thursday, it's important to keep growing spiritually. Sign up for Power Shot, a daily devotional on realms of meditation led by Prophet Lovi himself. You could visit us on prophetlovi.com. And it doesn't stop there. We love growing middle schoolers and high schoolers here at Revelation Youth. On top of that, we meet in person on Fridays and every Tuesday for Global Zoom Prayer. Daughters of Revelation, hosted by Prophetess Maggie, gather together every first Tuesday of the month, and the whole Rev Nation family come together to pray every first Saturday of the month with Apostle Gershon. Zoom link available. The world is changing all around us, and your help enables us to spread the message of Jesus. You can do this by connecting what matters most to you to who matters most to you. When you give your offering in-house, please write legibly using the envelopes in the seat back in front of you. Prefer to give online? The accepted methods will appear on your screen. Be sure to follow us on all social media platforms and tag us in your pictures and your videos. Many people worldwide have encountered this house and the message of Jesus. All because someone liked, subscribed, and shared something very real happening right here. If you have any questions, just stop by the information booth in the lobby or visit the website at revelationchurchla.org. Thank you for your attention. We know this will be a service where you will encounter God. The time is now. Your time is now. The Lord has something just for you. Wow, I absolutely love being in the house of the Lord. Revelation Nation, Revelation family, make some noise today. It's a blessing to be here. This is the house of miracles, and this is the house where the Spirit of God is tangible. I hope you guys are feeling welcomed, and I hope your hearts are expecting something fresh today. Eleanor, how are you feeling today? I'm feeling so excited to be once again in the presence of God. You know what it feels like? I feel like we're all in a womb, just being <laughs> nurtured, being grown, yes. being built by the Spirit of God. I love it. And every single time we come here, He gives us something special. Yeah. So. Amen. We're going to have a jam-packed march. So That's you right. guys want to hear all of these things coming up that yes. you would not miss anything that God has ordained for you in this house. That's right. That's right. Speaking of, we have something super special on April 7th. Dancers, this is for you. We are kicking off our 2024 dance ministry with orientation. If you want to be a part of the dance ministry, please check out the website, revelationchurchla.org to visit orientation. You must come to orientation if you want to audition to be a part of the dance ministry. At orientation, you'll hear all about what the ministry is, the plans for the year, the vision for the year. You can ask all of the questions. So we can't wait to see you at orientation. 
So you're telling me I can't just like jump in and do choreography <laughs> with you guys? You can't just show up. No, you can't just show up. We want you to come to orientation, hear about the ministry, and make sure that it's what, it's what God wants for you. So come to orientation. You must register, revelationchurchla.org, and we will see you on April 7th. I can't wait. Amen, amen. Well, before I say this next announcement, can we just give a round of applause for all our former and current RISE students? Yes, RISE! We love RISE. <laughs> you guys, we have seen God pull people from all over the world. And the transformation that has been taking place is like caterpillar to butterfly. Yeah. It's intense. Yeah. And I want to invite a very special guest to tell us more about it. Miss Lori, come on in. How are you doing today? Hi, how are you ladies doing? Amazing, Amaz. Tell, tell us about RISE. What's going on? Listen, Revelation Nation, we offer an exciting nine-week intensive ministry training program called RISE. Have you all heard of it? Yes, yes, yes. Listen, you absolutely should. The Bible tells us that many are called, but few are chosen. Well, you have to make yourself choosable. And one of those ways that you can be equipped to do what God has called you to is to actually learn the word. We got faith, but if all that we know about the God that we serve is what we've heard hearsay and what the preacher has said, then we're actually missing out on so much Amen. revelation. Amen. But you guys can go ahead and tap in. The RISE program is not just another Bible college. It's not just a Bible course, but it is a place for impartation, implantation, activation, Woo! and our summer semester is up for registration right now. Go to revelationchurchla.com org to find out more and apply. I can't wait to see you then. And Amen. our current semester is graduating on Sunday. Yes. So exciting times. Thank you so Thank much, you ladies. Thank you so much, Lori. Thank you Make so some noise much. for our graduating RISE class. Yes. <laughs> That's amazing. I love what God is doing through this house. And I love what God is doing through our kids. Yes. Revelation Youth, we have an amazing service coming up with our very own prophetess, Lena, who will be teaching April 5th at 6.30 p.m. here at Revelation Church. This is a ministry for all the middle schoolers, all the high schoolers, and we invite you to this amazing service, April 5th, 6.30 p.m., Please come. We cannot wait to see what God is going to do through the children of this house. Yes, yes. Well, I'm excited to announce something we've, some of you have been waiting for an entire year to do. That's right. Baptisms. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> We're going to have our Good Friday service on March 29th. And all you need to do is just sign up uh, to the website revelationchurchla.org and required for the, and, and sign up for the required yes. baptism class. Yes. If you can complete this class in time for Good Friday, don't worry, we'll be having baptisms every quarter this yes, year. Yes. So you can select which date works for I you. I love that. I remember when it used to be just once a year, and it's once so transformative, and you know how Revelation Look. Nation is, it yes. runs out, but quarterly. So yes. make sure to jump in on that. I've done a baptism, and, and it's, it's truly life-changing. Life -changing. It's truly, you yeah. know, as the prophet says, certain things you don't even have access to until you fulfill this. That's so right. So make sure to sign up. Yeah, and I love that this is a new thing that is going to be four times a year. So it's not just once a year, ladies and gentlemen, but we are having baptisms every single quarter. There is a required class that you must take before you, ba you get baptized. Mm -hmm. So revelationchurchla.org, make sure that you register. And we have a few more announcements, but before we go into those, we want you to pay attention to these next few videos and really listen to what God is doing in this house. Check out these few clips.
hope you guys paid attention <laughs> to some of those videos so you don't miss out on anything. I'm excited to have our next guest to uh, talk about Manage My Wealth yes. Conference. Let's give a round of applause yes. for that. Mr. Bishop Van, come on in. How are you doing, sir? Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. How are you ladies doing? We're doing fantastic. Thank Beautiful. you. Beautiful. We're so excited for our annual Manage My Wealth Conference. Yes. And it's the day before Easter. Yes. And this theme, we're talking about unlocking the vault, mm. where we're going to manifest, manage, and multiply, which is truly your inheritance. Yes. And there's no greater teacher than the great Prophet Lovi, who is going to lead us with that. We also have Prophetess Taryn, yes, my amen. wife, and a whole host of great teachers amen. that will unlock what is yours. You can't receive something if you don't know that it's yours. You first have to know that it's yours Amen. first. Yes. So we're so excited. You could register online yes. and in person so we don't have any excuses, yes. right? Yes. Uh, and, and where questions? can we sign up for that? Oh, you can sign up uh, at... MissLolitaBrown.com <laughs> MissLolitaBrown.com <laughs> You know, thank you so much for that. I'm, I'm very excited. Last... Uh, year I attended this and it's truly yes. life changing. There's truly an increase. And, and like you said, we receive the physical and the spiritual principles for wealth for all you future millionaires, billionaires, and trillionaires. Thank you so much. Amen. And I didn't pay you to say that. <laughs> Beautiful, beautiful. Ladies and gentlemen, that is going to be Saturday, March 30th at 1 p.m. And this is for online people and in-person people. So if you're out of state, you may still tap yeah. in and register at MissLolitaBrown.com. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be But amazing. not just that. We have a special, special upcoming event. Yeah. Come on in here. He's going to let us know all about it. Mr. Alex, how are you doing today, sir? Well, I'm well. How are you guys doing? Amazing, amazing. Event. Tell us. We heard there's a worship event going on or something. Yeah. Tell us what's happening. We want to know. Tomorrow night, In His Presence Worship Concert yes. is going down. We got surprise merch. We have a special guest. Ooh. And also, VIPs, don't forget to wear your layers because that will gain you access to everything your ticket comes amen, with. Amen, amen. Is registration still open? Is it a packed house? Tell us it the is details. It's packed. It's packed, packed. But, we, but we do have about 20 more VIP tickets. Okay. So if you really want to be there, get your ticket today, like Amen. right now. On the website, revelationchurchla.org? Yes. yes. Beautiful. And what time does this event start? Doors open at 7. 7 o'clock. All right, Mr. Alex. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay. Tomorrow a at concert for oh, Jesus. Wow. Jesus is going to be amazing. And wow. like he said, it's a packed house. Only yes. 20 VIP tickets left. So if you want to be in the house of God, if you want to be where the spirit of God is, Make sure you get your tickets, revelationchurchla.org. Yes. Amen. Well, we have all been waiting for this. We're, we as have. a matter of fact, counting down the days for more than one reason. <laughs> Our Easter service is happening on March 31st this year. Yes. And we are going to celebrate with you and your families. It's going to be a powerful, extra, extra powerful time in the presence of God as we celebrate the resurrection victory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Of our Lord Jesus and also uh, the resurrection fast. Yes. We're going to have like a morning buffet as the prophet said today. Amazing. <laughs> yes. So Revelation Nation, all of you are invited. Yes. Plan to bring your families, your neighbors. Mm -hmm. No special wardrobe is needed as long as you just show up to celebrate the king right. together. Especially because we have made even extra room for yes. everybody, right? Look, we have made... Above and beyond room. So everybody can come. Nobody will be turned away. We have room. We have made plans left and right that everybody will have a seat to partake in Resurrection Sunday service. So invite a friend. Invite your family. Invite somebody that has never heard of Jesus. Because this day, lives are going to be changed. Revelation Church, make some noise. Today is prophetic night service. Please rise to your feet today. Rise to your feet. There is something special in the house of God. God is always willing to depart something new. So have your hearts be expecting something fresh. Have your minds be ready to receive. Are you ready to receive? I'm so ready. Let's go. Let's, let's watch some it. videos and, and let's do this. Let's pray and worship. God bless you guys. Yeah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Lift your hands. Let's pray. Let's pray. Lift your hands. Let's stand. Let's pray. Praise waits for thee, O God, in Zion. And unto thee shall the vow be performed. O thou that hearest our prayers. Unto thee shall all flesh come. Blessed is the man whom thou choose and cause to approach unto thee, that he may dwell in thy courts. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of thy house, even in thy holy temple. We will lift our voice. We will give you praise. We will exalt your name above all names. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity and the privilege to come into your courts. We thank you, Lord. Lift your voice and give the King of glory praise. And thank him for the opportunity. Zebra na mazon dili ba 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 ka supra da ba ba ya. Father, we lift your church before the throne of grace. Your word says, O Lord, that when we lift your church, we should come boldly. So we come boldly. We lift every family. We lift every household. Even them that are joined in online with us from every platform. We lift them before the throne of grace and we thank you, Lord, that your word is yea and amen. Your word is a yea and amen. So we thank you for every home. We thank you for every family. But today, they will see your glory like never before. Oh, Lord, that answers all flesh. Oh, Lord, that answers all flesh. Oh Lord, if that answers all flesh, may our prayers be answered tonight. Oh Lord, that makes a way. Oh Lord, that touches our bodies. May our bodies be healed tonight. Oh Lord, may our bodies respond to divine intervention. Lord, your people have come from a name. They've come from afar. But Lord, you are the God that is the same today, tomorrow, and forever. Ale brano shata baba. You are the God that heals every sickness and every disease. So we submit to you tonight. We submit to you tonight. Father, some of us are standing in the gap for our families, for our loved ones. Father, as a church, we stand on behalf of the people of God. May your name be glorified. May your name be glorified. May your name be glorified. Oh Lord, we pray for the help. We pray for the help for our homes, for our families, even concerning our endeavors. Lift your voice. Lift your voice, lift your voice. Rabba da ba ba de 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 bo shanda ba ba na makata. Rabba da ba ba ra ba 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 de de de. Mende de 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 bo shabra da ba ba. Rana makata la ba ra ba ba da ba be. Mende de 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 bo shabra na ma. O kata ta ba ra ba shabra de mese. Rana ma zonde de 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 bo sha. Thank you, Lord, for answered prayer. Thank you, Lord, for answered prayer. Now, if you believe that the Lord is still in the business of answering prayers, begin to celebrate your victory. Begin to celebrate your victory with a shout, with a dance, with a shout, with a dance. Celebrate your victory. Celebrate your victory. Even when you're online, 
you can lift your voice, you can celebrate your victory. The word of God says that in his presence there is fullness of joy. Receive the fullness of joy. Receive the fullness of joy in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now listen, listen to what the word of God says. In the book of Psalms, in the 89th chapter, the word of God says, there is a sound that the children of God hear. It is a sound of victory. And when that sound is resonated, you don't need to hear a sound that is outside of you, but it is a sound that registers your victory. I'm looking for a people who know that sound. I am looking for a people who can lift their voice. Who can celebrate victory? Who can celebrate victory? Hallelujah! 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 Celebrate Jesus! Celebrate Jesus! Glory to God! Thank you, Lord. And he reigns forever. 
you're deserving of a great praise. If we had 10,000 hands, we couldn't thank you enough. If we had 10,000 tongues, we couldn't say thank you enough. How about got a few witnesses in this house? Hallelujah. Put your hands together like this, come on. You know the song? We love to call your name in somewhere we cannot explain about our voice when we proclaim your great name, your great name, sir. We love to yeah. call your name in somewhere we cannot
this room. Come on, is anybody free in this building? Come on, lift your voice in this room. Let me hear you say, freedom, fill the room. Say, freedom, fill the room. Come on, one more time. Say, freedom, fill the room. Let me hear you lift your voice. Say, yeah. So you put your hands together.
many have been set free by the Lord Jesus? I said, how many have been set free? Let me hear it in your praise. Let me hear your freedom in your shout. Let me see your freedom in your jumping, in your raising of your hands. Because we are people that have been set free. Set free. Yeah. Oh, we praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We praise you, Jesus. We praise you for your faithfulness. We praise you for your goodness, Lord. We acknowledge where would we be without you, Lord? Where would we be? God, it is because of your faithfulness, because of your grace, that we are here today. And we just love to be in your house. How many say amen? We love to be in your presence, Lord. There is no better place for us to be on a Thursday evening, on a Sunday morning. God, we desire to be in your house, Lord. As David said, I rejoice when they told me. Let us go to the house of the Lord. That better is one day, even at the courts, even in the overflow. Better is one day in his house, one minute in his presence, surrounded by the glory of the one and only true God, true King. We praise you in this place. We worship you, Jesus.
your promise is my confidence Cause you're faithful
está sobrando Aunque no pueda ver está sobrando Siempre estás, siempre estás sobrando Tú siempre estás, siempre estás sobrando Aunque no pueda ver está sobrando Aunque no pueda ver está sobrando Tú siempre estás, siempre estás sobrando Tú siempre estás, siempre estás sobrando Aunque no pueda ver está sobrando Aunque no pueda ver está sobrando Tú siempre estás, siempre estás sobrando Tú siempre estás, siempre estás sobrando song says, Dearest Father, closest friend, most beautiful, most beautiful. Dearest Father, closest friend, most beautiful, most beautiful. Come on, say dear. Church, most beautiful. Let the church worship. Come on, y'all sound real good. Most beautiful. Raise it now. Say, dearest Father.
Bible simply says is, there are no words, <laughs> there is nothing left, my love seeks to you. <laughs> in this room even now tonight
if it's not authentic to what you actually believe. The reason some of you are stuck where you're worshiping is right now is because you're having a hard time processing what's coming out of your mouth. And there needs to be some level of authenticity to what you're saying so that something begins to leap like Elizabeth. Something all is shake when you reminisce about the goodness of God. When you reminisce about how awesome he's been. When you think about what he's rescued you from. When you think about what he's taken you to.
in the name of your son Jesus for your goodness your kindness that you do not change you remain the same merciful God we thank you for this hour that we will indeed see your goodness sanctify us purify us father set us up for the blessings you have ordained for us deliver us from the wicked one and set our feet on the right path Father, we thank you for your goodness and your kindness that remains forever. That tonight will be the night that our lives will be changed and transformed forever. That every prayer and every burden that everyone has come with today, it shall be lifted off them in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you that you are about to change our lives for the better. To change our lives for your name's sake. Do it for us, O oh Lord, according to your loving kindness and mercy, in Jesus' name. And everybody said, clap your hands if you believe the Lord Jesus. Clap your hands to the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah for you in the presence of God today now your amen is too small when you are in the presence of God understand that there is something allocated for you because in God there is no luck in God there is no chance in God there is no opportunity there is only one thing, the blessing of God. Amen. Amen. And it is not given to you by accident. It is given to you intentionally. Yes. I want you to make one prayer to the Lord. Ask the Lord to increase your capacity to receive his blessing. If God has prepared a particular blessing for you, and you fail in your ability to attain it, it's no longer God's fault. In fact, it will never be God's fault. It will always be your fault. That God provided, but you failed to receive. That is on you. It is not on God. Many of the delays that the people of God face, it's never God. It's us. Because when God wants to do something, and he says he will do something, he will do it. But when he releases it to you, where does it go if you have nowhere to attain it? I, I don't know if I'm communicating to somebody. Amen. Amen. Lift your right hand to heaven. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. I believe in your strength. I believe in your strength. And I believe in your ability. And I believe in your ability. There is nothing that is impossible with you. There is nothing that is impossible with you. You can do all things. You can do all things. My Father and my God expand me. My Father and my God expand me. My Father and my God stretch me. My Father and my God stretch me. That I may receive what you have ordained for me. That I may receive what you have ordained. Lift your voice in your own words. Read. Uh, pray Father, Father, in your own words pray
Lift your voice, lift your voice. If you believe it, clap your hands. Hallelujah. If you believe the Lord, clap your hands. If you believe the Lord Jesus, clap your hands. Hallelujah. I don't want to preach too much tonight. I don't want to preach too much tonight. I want to manifest God tonight. Amen. Joel chapter 3, verse 10 to 12. Joel chapter 3, verse 10 to 12. Are you there? Yes. Ah, this side is here. This side. Are you there? Yes. yes. One, two, three. Beat, Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. Assemble yourselves and come, all ye heathen, and gather yourselves together round about. Thither cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Lord. Let the heathen be wakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. For there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. Put ye in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come Hey. <laughs> Uncle Todd. <laughs> One more time. One, two, three. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. Assemble yourselves and come, all ye heathen, and gather yourselves together round about. Then the cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Lord. Let the heathen be wakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. For there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. Say, Father, give me the spirit of revelation. Father, give me the spirit of revelation. That I may know your ways. That I may know your ways. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You may sit in heavenly places. Can we turn off the AC, please? Amen. Feels like the North Pole. <laughs> I don't know if the South Pole is cold, but hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you here? Wave your hands if you're here. Now, I want to read this for you so that you can, uh, you can learn something. Joel chapter 3 from verse 10. Beat your plowshare into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. Now tonight, I am going to teach you about your portion. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Shake your neighbor, say, neighbor, what is your portion? Neighbor, what is your portion? I can't hear you. Neighbor, what is your portion? I can't hear you. <laughs> neighbor, what is your portion? For every single person that God has ever created, there is a portion allocated to you. Now, a portion is not provision. Provision and your portion are two different things. Because somebody can have provision but never have an inheritance. Just because God is providing for me, just because I have certain things in my life does not mean I have an inheritance. 
Inheritance is a completely different thing. And this is what God calls your portion. So if God is going to come to you, if you are going to walk with God, you need to understand what is your portion. You see, many are trying to inherit things that are not assigned for them. Many are trying to enter into places that is not ordained for them. And what happens is you waste in prayer, you waste in time that you can never regain. And you end up not walking in the complete purposes and the blessings that God has actually assigned and ordained for you. Blessings have no name on it. Blessings will be received by whoever is open to receive it. But your portion is only set apart for you. It fits only with you. It's like a puzzle that has to completely click in with you or else nobody can steal it from you. Now, when you look at Jacob and Esau, Esau had a birthright, but he did not have an inheritance. I I want you to understand this. Esau was supposed to be the firstborn, and he was the firstborn, but it was by law that the firstborn receives the blessing. But what was inside of Isaac was not a blessing. It was legacy. It was an inheritance. And when God put him on the scale... He found that Jacob was deserving. And Esau, whom it was his right, could not receive it. I'm here to tell you, you may have missed the blessing, but you have not missed your portion. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me find somebody I can talk to. You may have missed your blessing, but you have not missed your portion. You see, blessings can change hands. Portions can only be passed down. Let me go to the overflow. I'm preaching to the wrong people. I'm going to say that one more time. Blessings can change hands. Portions cannot. Your blessing was not ordained from the foundation of the earth. Your portion was. Amen. 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 Anyone can pray, Father, I am starting a new business. Bless me. Lord, I'm about to do this. Bless me. Father, I want this. Bless me. So we can have similar blessings. But we'll never have the same portion. Boy. So good. So good. Your portion was designed according to the assignment Jehovah God ordained for you. Yes. Amen. Amen. This is why it does not matter if people have gone ahead of you. Boy. When your portion is released from heaven. Yes. Even though others seem to have been going ahead of you, succeeding before you, understand that whenever you have your portion, you will dwarf everyone that is blessed. Amen. Amen. Uh, I feel like I'm alone. I wish somebody could hear me. Somebody shout, I have my portion. I have have my portion. portion. I can hear you shout, I have my portion. I have my portion. So when God chose you, because you are on earth by design, don't worry about the banners. Put those down right now. Listen to the word. It's more important than your problem. 
If you hear this word, your problem will fly away. Amen. Amen. Nothing wrong with banners. Trust me, I will pray for you. But hearing God's word, never elevate what you're going through be above God's word. Because even if you get freedom and you don't have the truth of God's word, you will not be able to sustain the blessing. How will you keep it? Are you understanding what I'm saying? Yes. That is why I love to teach. We can just come in service and we start anointing, praying and casting and prophesying. But tomorrow, this word was more important for you. Because one thing about the earth you need to understand, problems will never cease. There will be just something else that needs another attention. But if you have the word of God, actually it's an antidote to problems. Oh, amen. What disturbs those who are on earth will no longer disturb you. Come on, I'm a sin. So when I'm teaching, even though your problem is pressing, look to Jesus. He will tell his prophet to talk to you. Amen, amen. Don't get my attention. Get his attention. You get his attention. I have no choice. I will have to talk to you. He is my boss. So understand this, there is a portion separated, set apart just for you. When you receive your portion, you become better than somebody who is simply blessed. Amen. Uh, let me explain to you. There are people who have blessings... That will never be remembered. Wow. 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 There are people who have blessings. That no one will ever be inspired by them. There are people who have blessings and they will be invisible. Have you ever asked yourself why is it that. People in politics or people in positions of power. Always love entertainers. Because they have a portion among the people. They have the attention of people that their money and influence cannot buy. Yeah. So if they want to be elected, they have to find somebody that people listen to. Take a few pictures. Go with them on a campaign and they get elected. It's good. Are you understanding what I'm saying? You have a portion from God. And that portion is coming to you. But you need to understand that when God is about to deliver your portion to you, God will use what is in your hand. God will not tell you go and find something else. God will say, you see that thing you have? It is the only weapon you will ever need. Come on. The devil is not fighting against your blessings. Because blessings come. And you will die and leave it. But your portion remains in you. And your children's children's children, your children's children and other children's children, yeah, until amen. the coming of the Lord. Amen. amen. No one can snatch your portion from you. Amen. You know, now we have technology where you, you know, you open your iPhone, it sees your face and it unlocks. You go to the airport, they just have to scan your face, your eyes, your finger or something, and everything unlocked. If somebody else pretends to be you, the technology is so advanced that it will detect you are fraud. Even if you put on makeup to look like a, a person, you change things. No, they know the fingerprints. They know this. They know. They have so much data that they know if it is really you or not. You have been praying for the blessing of God. But you have never asked for your portion. Come on. Amen. Come on. God will never come and tell you, I have something for you. Your portion. No. 
God knows when you begin to demand your portion, you have matured. In understanding that you are becoming a custodian of God's mysteries. You are becoming a custodian of God's treasures. God will give you a seal of approval that you will execute judgment on his behalf. Now, now, now watch this. Beat your plowshare into a sword. And your pruning hooks into spears. God did not say now because you're about to go and fight, go and buy a sword. No. God says, you see what is in your hand. Turn it into a sword. You won't need new skills to get your portion. Amen. 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 You will just need to sharpen what you have. Yes. You won't need a new profession to be increased. You just need to sharpen what God has placed in your hands. Hallelujah. When Moses came before God, he thought God would say, I am giving you an army to go and deliver my people. Nope. God told him, uh, you see that shepherd stuff you have? That's all you need, go. So what you are undermining is actually your key. Wow. Come on. Come on. Now, now look at this. Look at this. Verse 11. Look at this. Assemble yourselves and come all ye heathen. Notice, even the heathen are being assembled by God. And gather yourself together round about. Cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Lord. Notice, he's now calling the heavenly host. Mighty ones are angels. But before this, listen to what he says. God says, beat your this and this into this. Let the weak say, I am strong. Your primary portion from God. Somebody say primary portion. Primary portion. Is strength. Amen. 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 Now you didn't hear me. You see, this is not power against demons. This is strength to be able to carry out what God needs you to do. It is supernatural in nature, but it is natural in its function. There are many of you that you feel tired. I've been doing this. I've been doing that. Nothing is working out. I've been doing this. I've been going here. I've been going there. I've been checking this out, but nothing is opening up. I am tired. Not because you are actually weak, but you don't have the strength for what it takes for the next chapter of your life. Oh, you're Thank teaching. You, you don't receive your portion because you prayed. You receive your portion because you demanded. Amen. Portions are not given to those who don't know that it is theirs. Come on. Come on. But how do I identify my portion? Whenever you are about to take vitamins, the correct ones, not the ones that are just in every counter. Many of these things are placebos. <laughs> but when you are about to really receive what will actually build your health, they do a blood test and they see the vitamins you are missing. As a child of God, you need to analyze yourself and say, what am I missing? Because what you're missing is your portion. Wow. Good. Wow. I don't know if you heard me. If God blesses you with money, tomorrow you will pray for more money. Father, I just need money for my bills. God sends you money for the bills. One month later, you say, Lord. Ha, 
the end of the month is approaching. It is coming close, oh Lord. But Father, you can make a way. Send somebody, Lord. When you are about to get a notice is when somebody shows up and saves you. Notice that is not your portion. That is called survival, provision. But when you have your portion, you will forget what rent looks like. Amen. When you have your portion, you will be laying in your own ground. Yeah. In your own land. Yeah. See. When you have a, a portion, you become the landlord. You no longer become the tenant. Amen. Amen. I receive. The Lord spoke to Abraham. He said, Abraham, come out of your father's house. Come out of your people. I am sending you to a land flowing in milk and, with milk and honey. This is your portion. You are in your father's house. You are closed down. There are traditions who keep you back. What I have for you is bigger than what they know. Where you're going, milk and honey flows. Amen. Hallelujah. People don't have to work for milk and honey. It is... Yes. Oh. Somebody shout, Lord, give me my portion. Lord, give me my portion. Say, Father, give me my portion. Father, give me my portion. Uh, sit, sit for two seconds. I'm trying to work this thing the best I can. So, so, so hear me, hear me, hear me. The reason why you are afraid to be a blessing to people is because you are calculating if I overbless, I will be broke. That means you have no portion because a portion doesn't run out. Oh, Come on, you're teaching good. Oh, you're teaching. <laughs> hey, somebody shall fire. Yeah, 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 yeah. When God has given you your portion, you can feed nations. You can lend to nations. Amen. And you still have more to give away. Amen. When Elisha was serving prophet Elijah, he looked at him and said, what can I do for you before I am taken? He said, I would like a double portion of your spirit. Now, in the history of impartation, no one had ever been given two servings that belonged to two people. Elisha demanded John the Baptist's portion. Elijah asked him what can i do for you he said i want a double portion of your spirit but elijah knows the one who come in my spirit is coming before the lord comes but here is somebody in my time demanding what is not theirs hey, you're teaching it I don't know if you're hearing me. He said, I want two portions. Meaning, Elijah could only serve a portion to one soul. And that is what he knew it was normal to do. But here is a man saying, not I just want one portion of your spirit. The man had a great appetite in the spirit. Some of you are not growing because your appetite is small. If you're not clapping, you're the one I'm talking about. It is you. Some of you need a greater appetite of the things of the spirit. L listen to what 1 Corinthians 14 says. It says it clearly. Desire. Covet spiritual gifts. He's saying, listen, think about it, dream about it, desire it. And he says, you know, all gifts are good, but desire the best gift. He's telling you, by the way, 
When you receive the Holy Spirit, he gives you a gift, but you can ask for another portion. Some of you didn't hear what I just told you. He's saying, desire the best gifts that serve everybody. Wait, but what if the Holy Spirit already gave me one gift? Wink, wink. You can get more if you know that what he has does not run. Amen. Amen. Many of you are fighting for earthly portions that expire. But God has a portion that will last for everlasting to everlasting to everlasting until the coming of the Lord and it will even continue in his presence. Amen. God had ordained kings on the earth. David was not the first king God ever chose. But David was the only one who receives the portion of the throne. Do you understand that the throne that Jesus sits on is renamed to be the throne of David? He will sit on the throne of his father. But Jesus said to them, if the Messiah is actually the son of of David then why did the Lord say and the Lord said to my Lord sit until I make your enemies your footstool he says so who is whose Lord so Jesus is coming on earth God in the flesh even when we go to the new Jerusalem that will come in that day that will land actually in Israel it's literally called Jerusalem the heavenly Jerusalem will come down. Guess what throne will still be there? Of David. So David has an eternal portion. For as long as the earth will ever remain, even the new earth, David will forever be called king. Even though the one who is sitting on the throne is called the king of kings. You will look at Jesus and say, son of David, I worship you. You will say, very well. David is on the side saying, yeah. You will remember me for eternity. I am not going anywhere. May the Lord release your portion. I receive. See. Listen to me. Another person that received a mighty portion in the sight of God was our father Abraham. Abraham was coming from our battle and he met Melchizedek. Melchizedek gave him bread and wine which represents the word of God and the spirit of God. But Abraham gave him gold. Gave him cash. But he gave tithe where there was no law. He did it prophetically. That he allocated a portion for God. Within what he had done, he set aside something for God. Do you know what Melchizedek said? He said, Abraham... You are possessor of heaven and earth. Abraham bought real estate in heaven. Wait, 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 wait. Shh. Do you know what paradise is actually called? Do you know what it's called? It's called Abraham's bosom. Abraham's rest. When you get to heaven, the first person you reach to is Abraham's bosom. Where your rest begins. So every time you are in heaven, you will say, oh, I'm going to Abraham's bosom. You are going to a region, a human being like you has a portion set up in heaven. Yeah. Come on. After prayer today, you will receive your portion. Amen. Amen. 
I speak to those who are online, those who are hearing my voice. There is a portion, listen to me, there is a portion, there is, there is a portion. There is a portion. There is a slice with this one. Blessings have no name. You've heard me say it, oh, what is mine will come to me. Nope. It doesn't. Anyone can get your blessing. But your portion, if you don't know it, it remains dormant. The prodigal son comes home. He asks God, give me my inheritance. Notice, he asked for what he will inherit. He took it and he spent it and came back broke. But he realized that, mm, I just want to be like the servants. But when his father saw him, he hugged him, he ordered that his outfit be changed, and he was given a ring. Why did his father do this? Not because he simply repented. But now he can move from the stage of blessings to the stage of portions. Boy. Because you can waste blessings, but you can never waste a portion. Amen. Portions have no expiration date. Am I talking to somebody? Yes. Portions cannot expire. His father gave him his ring. If you know what a ring means in those days, it was the seal of the family. That means he had been positioned in the lineage of what his own father received was now passed down to him. Not the blessing, the ring. The seal to unlock, to approve, to disprove. Your portion is being given to you. See, see. Your portion is being delivered to you. See. What is hindering you from your portion? You are distracted by needs. The older brother of the prodigal son came and said, Oh, my father, I've been serving you so faithfully. You have not even given me a lamb to celebrate with my friends. But this guy came back who was so bad. Now you are here celebrating him and doing all these things. His father said, hey, my guy. Don't you know that everything is actually yours? He thought he was doing God a favor. By serving him faithfully. But actually he was serving his own interests. You see, many of you have been lied to be faithful to God. And then he will bless you. No, 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 no. Faithfulness is because it's your house. You are supposed to. Amen. Amen. Strangers should not clean your house. You should clean your own house. Amen. That proves that you own it. It is yours. It is your problem. It is your responsibility. Being faithful to God has nothing to do with God's blessing. It has everything to do with your character. Are you a child of the house or are you a servant in the house? Amen. Good. If I am a child of the house, then I am more concerned about my house than a servant who is being paid to just clean and they go. They are doing it for a paycheck. You are doing it because it is your legacy. Amen. It is your duty to maintain your father's reputation. Man. These are two different things. They are not one and the same. They are not the same thing. They are not the same thing. They are not. Absolutely not. So now this boy is complaining with his father and his father is saying, all these things are yours. So when you don't know, it is not God's problem, it's your problem. If you cannot enjoy what God has said for you, it is not God's fault, it's your fault. 
It is your duty to know what God through his mercy has made available for you. Abraham and many others, even if you take our father Adam. Adam lost his place, but he did not lose his portion. His portion was to be the father of all living. He still is. Losing the garden did not change his assignment. You see, some of you feel like I used to be in a good place. Now I'm no longer in a good place. It is not about you being in a good place. It's about you knowing your portion. If you know your portion, you don't need favorable situations. You just need you to be in a situation and it will be favorable. Yeah. Amen. Healing is not your portion. Healing is your right. Why? Because when God created man, he never provided healing because healing was never part of the plan. Uh oh. Healing is your right. In the new constitution, by his stripes, we were healed. <clears throat> so when the stripes are not there, then what happens? It is because it was not the plan. I don't know if you can hear me. It is because it was not the plan. Will God still heal you? Yes. Was God healing people in the past? Yes. But it was not what, it was not the mission. When you receive your portion, if the doctor says you're dying tomorrow, you will live a hundred years until what you are called. Yeah. Man, man. Your clapping is too small. Instead of praying for healing, tell God, I want my portion. Yeah. When he gives you your portion, you must live to fulfill yes. everything that God ordained for you. Yes. But if you receive healing, you can just live for yourself. God primarily secures his interests and his interests benefit us. His interests will benefit us. We are the ones who will benefit. We are the ones who benefit. No one else but us. We are the ones who will enjoy when we actually walk in everything that God wants us to have. We are the ones that, that benefit. What are you willing to do for your portion? What are you willing to do for your portion? Psalm 16 verse 5. <clears throat> the Lord is the portion of my inheritance. And of my cup. Notice this. Mm, Bishop, you're going to love this. People just say, my cup runneth over. Do you know why your cup is not running over? God is not your portion. If God is your portion, then he also becomes your inheritance material. And when you receive that inheritance that will remain for you and your children's children because God is your portion, the next thing he also becomes the portion of your cup. Wow. So every day you will drink from that thing, it will never run. Amen. Amen. So people say, oh, my cup runneth over. No, 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 no. You are missing a very important part. The cup runneth over for those who have their portion. Your cup doesn't run over if you're worried if you're going to overspend. If you have enough for you, your children or your husband or your wife or your brother and sister, that's all you have. You don't have a running over cup. 
When your cup is running over, it means it is a consistent flood. That you need to spend money. Your CPA needs to call you and say, yo, you are saving too much money. It's looking bad. Can you give away money to some... And I receive. So that we can get tax breaks. Spend the money. Give, go buy a boat. Go buy a build. Go. Wealth is coming to somebody right now. I receive. If you have to sweat every day, you have to break your back every day, mm, your cup is not running over. Are you sure you can hear me? Yes. Wave your hands if you can hear me. In every overflow, in every area that you're in, wave your hands if you can hear me. Our children... The seed that God has given us is to have somebody that will continue to enjoy what cannot be done with you. When you chop God's blessing, it is too much that you need somebody else to continue. Because the... Amen. So good. Amen. The reason why you are struggling right now in life emotionally, physically, financially, however it may be, as long as there is struggle, is because the family never received its portion. You see, everyone speaks about generational curses, generational blessing, bloodline curses. Nobody's talking about portions. <laughs> Nobody has ever sat down and said, mm, what about my portion? Because God also has his portion, you know that. God's portion is the saints. That's why he says, these ones are my bride. They are mine. No one, I am jealous. No one can take them. No one will take them from me. They are my portion. God has already claimed you. God has bought you with a price. God has decided it is you. He went through all the trouble of the cross. All manner of suffering. Because all he wanted was his portion. All you do is a rubber shutter. Demons catch fire. Catch fire. Demons can't stop your portion. They can stop a blessing. You see, you are clapping like that because you are not sure. Your faith. <laughs> Demons can block your blessing. They can do something to stop you from receiving your blessing. But when your portion is released, come rain, come sunshine. Whether the demon has a, has a fit or he cries or he gathers all the Harry Potters and and Dumbledores and all these people with all their wands, they will not be able to stop the portion. Amen. Amen. Your mission should be Father. Before these 21 days are over. Yes. Come on. Let me talk to somebody that is fasting. Let me talk to somebody that is pursuing the Lord's face. Amen. Father, before these 21 days are done, I want my portion. Amen. I desire what? My portion. That should be your cry. That should be your drive. Because when you have your portion, health will not be a problem. Man. Open doors will not be a problem because you already have what you need to go through life. Who will stop you? Who can curse you when you have your portion? Do you know why you cannot curse Israel? They have their portion. You can't speak against what has its portion. 
you are creating a fight with the almighty God. There is a sound in heaven. There is a sound in heaven. That the portion of the elect is coming down. See. It is time for the sons of God to be made manifest. If you are the one I am talking about. Lift your hands and begin to pray and tell the Lord to deliver unto you your portion. Lift your voice and cry to him. Deliver unto me my portion, O oh Father. Deliver unto me my portion. Deliver God my portion, God. I want my portion want today, my portion, God. God. Now that I know God, I want my portion, Deliver God. unto me my portion. I I you ran my portion, my toilet, my toilet. May I not leave this place without my portion. Ilina Ronda Bage Semana Mazanda Vanda. Leave my portion, oh Father. My portion, God. Colin Christ. My portion, God. Eta Sanda Lavan. Linda Ronda Magele Masunda Bagataya. Let Ruta me reuri Rosa. I no longer want the blessing, oh Lord. But I desire and I want the portion, oh Father. I want my portion, the portion. I demand my portion, oh Lord. I will not leave without my portion, oh Father. Zede le maruka ni de 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 Ropa la pari de luste Vendo le marida luma sante Curata manatri dice Rupa la sante de parando Le maracuste de macrutuso I will not leave without my portion today, Father. marapa, Lift your voice, lift your voice, lift your voice. I am tired of blessings, O oh Lord. I want my portion, Father. I want my portion. I demand my portion. Zena mahande le kito rosto, peke ne makadusa, ne impalavani karute le mande. Zoma na, dogo dogo dogo, dogo dogo dogo. Zete le kibra dasi maduste, pika le bariba zonko. Zena mahande le makruduzwe, pika le baraba zonko. Lift your voice, lift your voice, lift your voice. I receive my portion. I receive my portion. I receive my portion.
Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. Let today be the day I receive what is mine. Let today be the day I receive what is mine. Father, I am tired of praying of things that look for things that look similar to others. Father, I am tired of praying for things that look similar to others. I want what is designed for me. I want what is designed for me. May heaven deliver my portion today. May heaven deliver my portion today. Lift your voice and tell the Lord, pray. I want God may heaven. Of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, I receive my portion. I receive my portion. When it comes to finances, when it comes to finances, I receive my portion. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Lift your voice. You're not praying. I can't. I don't see you praying. Speak to the Lord. Hear me, children of God. On Sunday, I want to do an anointing service. 
to just Amen. open something for the second phase of our fasting. Amen. Amen. Because we are going towards the finish line. Today, I want you to lift your hands. Trust me, what you want from God is already yours. I'm going to say it one more time. What you want from God is already yours. If you know there is a portion for you, it has already been delivered to you. Amen. Amen. Tell the Lord, thank you for your portion. Begin to thank him for your portion in your children, in all that is yours. Lift your voice and pray. For my portion. I thank you for my portion. was deep this message was deep come on lift it up if you really receive what the prophet taught tonight you know that you yourself even just lifting that it's already done so father as we lift these needs to you father our loved ones that case that situation lord we thank you that our portion lord god because of us because of the portion that we have it is touching every single person connected to us. It is locating that case. It is going to the root of the issue. To the root of the issue. To the root of the issue, Lord God. That you are changing situations. You are changing stories. You are realigning destinies. You are realigning purpose, God. And we thank you for testimonies. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. So just lift up what you're prepared to give to the Lord. Lift up what you want to give to Him. Okay. Lift up what you want to give to the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. As Prophet said, anointing service on Sunday. So just be prepared for whatever the instruction will be that we are given. Amen. So lift up your offering, your seed, your tithe, whatever you have brought to the house of the Lord. And just begin to speak over it. Begin to declare over it. We know in this house we're not going to give if we're not going to pray. So speak over it. Father, receive the sacrifice. We're able to give out of the abundance you've given to us, Lord. And Father, I pray that anyone that has not anything to give, they will never know lack because they're in this house. 
they will never know dryness again because they're in this house. Father, that even as you release their portion, Father God, not only to be a blessing to your house, but a blessing for the kingdom and a blessing, Father, to everybody connected to them. So we thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. 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 As you look to the directions of the ushers, come giving, rejoicing. Amen. Amen. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God.
Hallelujah. It is such a blessing to be in the presence of God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with you now and forever. Go from this place knowing that you are blessed in the mighty name of Jesus. We love you and we'll see you on Sunday. Remember to invite a friend or family. Amen. So there's a difference between being poor and being broke. These are generational truths that will leave a legacy for your family. When you feel like you don't have anything, when you feel like I might as well end it, that's when he really showed up. You are Christian, but you're afraid to buy a jet because people will say something. You're not spiritual. Anyone that is experienced or that wants to be wealthy, they know that life is always evolving. The Bible says money answers all things. Let's get this knowledge so we can have that money that will answer all things. I looked at a, a prophet calls me and says, God said, go back and anoint that place you saw as yours. I've ha I still own that building. To be poor is a mindset. The evidence that you have really fulfilled all spiritual righteousness, you're supposed to be rich. 